Hi, this is Kyle Piercy with you in the athletics.com. I'm sitting down with head men's basketball coach Stan Gerard one day before the GLVC championship tournament. Uh, coach, you guys are coming off a first round win against Missouri St. Louis, and that's setting up the third meeting with Wisconsin Parkside uh, this season. The Rangers are 2 0 uh, against the Greyhounds this season. Uh, most recently, February 18th, they came in here and won 92 to 84. So let's start right there with that with that matchup. Um, obviously, you guys are familiar with each other now. What are you hoping to see or not see, maybe from these uh, earlier season meetings? Well, we have to do a better job of shutting down their big two. Um, McCullum and Brown really hurt us in both games. Uh, they pushed the ball in transition, but more than anything, they got their feet in the paint and forced us to, to help off other guys. Uh, Flanagan made a couple big shots uh, in the second half, and it was a close game. And those guys, they, they got to the free throw line. They, they, they got open jump shots. They beat us up the court in transition. You know? So all those things really affected us as the game went on uh, in terms of you know, how we ended up. You know, we felt like going into the game that we had to take away their transition uh, offense, uh, keep McCullough and Brown out of the paint. And, and make others beat us. And everything we, we talked about doing, we didn't do a good job of. What kind of confidence does that first round win on Sunday give you guys? I mean, it was an ugly game, really. I mean, it was hard to get momentum for either team. Uh, but you guys came away with a 13-point victory. What kind of – in a, in a shorthanded uh, team as well, you guys really relied on some, some depth from your bench players. So what, uh, you know, what kind of confidence did you guys get from that win? Well, it was a very ugly game. Uh, if you think about – we're not very deep anymore. Without Eric and Milos, you know, we, we have two bigs, and, and our first guard down at the bench is, is Michael Rosser, and in this case on against uh, Umso was, was uh, Miles Ware. Mm -hmm. And he came in and made a couple big shots for us, but, you know, we had to play with a couple of different lineups. We put Jabri in for a second, and we took him out pretty quick because everybody's now starting to pack it in against us with Eric Davidson being out. Uh, we, we talked to Miles prior to the game about, you know, be ready to go because he made the play. Mm -hmm. And he made a couple of big shots for us, but, you know, that helps us out in terms of knowing that we have some other guys that can step up and play. Um, we don't know Eric's status, we don't know Milos' status, but you know we're gonna go with what we have in terms of what we played with last game. So uh, we needed a win like that. You know, we, it was a grind out, it's a grind out type of win for us, and we, we found a way to get it done. But you know, it's gonna be a tough task for us against Parkside, and, and we're excited about you know another life, another opportunity to play these guys because we felt like we let two games go in the first matchup, first couple matchups against with those guys, right? Sure, and, and let's uh, move on to some individuals. Chris <clears throat> Tate Hall really headlining the all GLVC, you know, the year-end awards, getting freshman of the year, which is sort of unprecedented for, for the program, just the third ever in uh, Greyhound men's basketball history. I mean, what does that mean for a guy, a uh, local kid, obviously, to, to come in and, and contribute like that in his first season? Well, I, I think that's huge, and that was, that was one of our selling points when we recruited Tate. You know, he had a couple opportunities ago to go uh, to some Division One programs, and we talked about – uh, you know, being a small fish in a big pond or coming here being a, and being a big fish in a small pond. And uh, everything we thought that he could do coming into the year, he, he's done it, you know. And I wanted to play a freshman or, or two uh, when the season started. You know, we ended up red shirt and Keegan Northern. We wanted to play those two guys right away. But Tate came in and started for us about nine or ten games and has really done a good job of, you know, picking and choosing the spots, not, a tr not trying to over overdo it and stay within his means. And he's had a great year for us. We're really looking forward to, you know, what he's going to do in the next few years for us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and a couple, a uh, few more individuals also getting recognized. Jimmy King, Jesse Kimson, and Eric Davidson all being named to the second team. Those are sort of your veterans, you know, the, the couple sophomores and a junior there. But, uh, you know, they've all kind of come back um, having played a lot last year, and they've really put it together this season, it seems like. Yeah, veterans. You're mm -hmm. talking about two guys that are sophomores. Right. And, and one guy that's a junior. But what I like about these guys on, on the – on the, on the second team and, and then take these are all four year guys you know guys we can build our program around and the future's bright here you know with, with these guys coming back uh, in Eric's case one year uh, takes three years and, and, and um, Jimmy and Jesse two more years so we really like what the future looks like uh, for our, for our basketball program uh, but really happy for these guys because they put the work in uh, over the course of the summer and all year and, and trying to get our team ready to go. Uh, and be prepared for this point. You know, these guys are very uh, fortunate to be here. We're fortunate to have them, but they're also, uh, I'm sure that it's going to humble these guys in terms of now it's going to make these guys work even more hard because now they see a lot at the end of the tunnel. And 
we're so happy for these guys, but you know, this is not our season. You know, we understand that we have a big game to play. Uh, these guys are going to get uh, rewarded for the hard work that, that they put in over the course of the summer and last year. We're really happy for them. All right, Coach, well, good luck in the quarterfinal. That will tip off at 3.30 Eastern. Uh, it'll be 2.30 local time, of course, in Evansville, Indiana, from the Ford Center. Uh, you can watch that on the GLVC Sports Network, and we'll have live stats. Uh, and, of course, live radio as well there. So, uh, you know, stay tuned to uindiathletics.com for all the coverage, and thanks for watching.